This is the Shrimp Trawler Video Channel Stratomatic Baseball Excel Game of the Week. Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 1979-82 Fall League Game of the Week. And boy, folks, we got a battle today from an unlikely place. It's the Indians and Expos, two teams having fabulous years as this regular season comes to an end. Hey, guess what, folks? They're both going to the playoffs. Let's take a look at the overall standings. We've had a clinch already, even before playing in this game. Let's go take a look at what we have here. Um, the Expos and Indians. Here we are. The Expos have clinched this division. The Indians had a chance, but they blew it. But the Indians, with two games left, should still be safe. Actually, they get, they're not going to lose one more of possible two. So they're safely away from the 6A and 6B wildcard teams. The Indians are in. They're going to make the playoffs. By the way, the Expos, this is a very excellent error for them. 79-82. 81, they go to the playoffs. 79, you know, they start getting... They have a really good 1979, people forget about. They have a good 80. 82 Expos, they get Al Oliver. He's batting champion. You got Tim Raines on this team. You got Andre Dawson. You'll see him. Um, let's take a look and see what's happened here. Game 1 in Cleveland... And it seemed like the Indians might give the Expos a run for their money. The Indians would have had to have won four out of five. Game one, we get a classic. A uh, couple singles, sack fly in the bottom of the second, two nothing. But in the third, a two run hammer by Larry Parrish, a solo shot by Gary Carter, three two Expos. Indians tied up in the fifth, Toby Harris solo shot. Then in the eighth inning, a triple by Dawson, a double by Oliver. They take a one-run lead, bottom of the inning. Solo shot by Andre Thornton. It goes ten innings, and Sparky Lyle comes in out of the Expo bullpen. A couple singles and a walk-off three-run dinger by Andre Thornton, having a nice year. And the Indians won game one, portending for a chance to win this division. But in game two, different story here. It's Bill Gullickson versus Rick Wortham. And they get to Wortham early here. Rich Murray, a bench player, it's a three-run homer. They get a solo shot by Larry Parrish in the eighth inning. Meanwhile, Bill Gullickson is cruising along here into the ninth, and he runs into some trouble. It's a 6-3 to three final. Expos split the first two games, clinching a tie for the division. And he's about to win three straight. Game three is in Expo land. The Burlington Expos playing out of Lake Champlain. And it's going to be Brian Kingman, a free agent signing by the Indians, against Rudy May for the Expos. And this one, well, the Indians have a nice first inning. They get a sack fly by Joe Charbonneau. This is all Expos. They get two in the third, a homer by Larry Parrish again in the fifth. Then the 7th and 8th innings, they go hog wild against the Indian bullpen. Homers by Andre Dawson. Homer by Gary Carter. These Expos, folks, they are something special. They really are. This is a special Expo club. They've clinched this division, and as we look into the American League, 10 over 500, looking for someone to take that number one seat away from them, I don't think anybody can. The Brewers, led by Robin Yountain Company, are six over. They're playing the Royals and they can't catch the 10 presently. The uh, Indians could put a damper on things if they won the next two games and win the series three games to two. Finishing in a tie, but the Expos have a tiebreaker by sweeping the Indians earlier this year. So that's, that's the only other wrinkle here. But the Expos have won this division. Both teams will advance. So we have a game four. We are in Burlington, home of the Expos. Just took them across the border, two hours south of Montreal. 
to Lake Champlain, relocated him to the American League, turned this little blue doohickey here into like a green for the Green Mountain State of Vermont. And that's where they play their games in relocation. Didn't go all the way down to uh, Washington, D.C. As, yeah, you kind of would figure. So here we are, Indians Expos, Game 4, great pitching matchup here. For your Indians, first year there, Burt be home by 11. He was a twin. He was a pirate. Now he's an Indian. 11, 7, and 81 with a 289 ERA. And for your Expos, it is Scott Sanderson. Always had a bunch of great right handed starting pitchers in Montreal, almost too many to name. You know, Gullickson, Sanderson, Palmer, Rogers, and before that, you know, you had Stoneman and Ranko, and not a lot of lefties, but a lot of righties. Scott Sanderson, 16 and 11 with a 3.11 ERA, pitching on three days rest. Let's get started from the land of the Expos. Cleveland and the Expos leading off. It'll be Toby Hara. 36 is a walk. Now, they got some speed, but the Expos have the minus three arm of Gary Carter. So for now, he'll just stay put and hope Mike Hargrove can also draw a walk. 1-9. No, Hargrove connects with a base hit to left field. Hara, could he go coast to coast on the 16 against the Reigns arm? He's going to try it. And he's there. So he's coast to coast. You got runners on the corners from Miguel Delaney. You got to bring him up because he's an eight bunter. 49 is a walk. And just like that, the Indians have something going on the first against Scott Sanderson. Two walks with a single sandwiched in between, and it's Andre Thornton. First inning, you play it back. 110, it's center B question mark. This is Hara. He will run against the arm of Andre Dawson, minus two. Makes it 16, 18, 16. And he's thrown out on a 19! Oh my! Tough break for the tribe. That's an 882 double play as Toby Hara. You know, he, 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 he just kind of jogged in just a little bit, and uh, he, he didn't be, couldn't believe Thor, uh, Mr. Uh, Dawson got a throw-off like that. An 8-8-2 double play, and with two outs, it's Ron Hassey. 37 is a walk to reload the bases for Jolton Joe Charbonneau. Who's the newest kid in town? Joe, Joe, Charbonneau. Here's the pitch. 67, that's a strikeout. Indians, three walks, a single, no runs. These Expos, man, they befuddle their opponents. Leading off, Tim Purple Reigns. 68, center field. Stevie Ray Braun, 1-8, bounce to short. And Dondre Awesome. 1-3, bouncer to short. Top of two, Rick Manning. 2-8, two, bounce to third. Jerry Dabububu, a.k.a. Jerry Dibzinski. 65, sky's the center. And Dwayne Kuyper, 45, short X. This is Brian Little, a four shortstop, but he makes the play. Again, the Indians just stumbling here. Bottom of the second. It is batting champion Al Oliver. 2-4. Sky's the center. Larry Parrish, 66. Flies left. And the kid, Gary Carter. 1-8. Let's take a look at Kid Carter's 1979 card. 283. 22 homers. Minus 3 arm. You know, next year, 1980, he'll have a minus 4 arm. And hit about the same amount of homers. So, yeah, something to look forward to. Like I said, man, these Expos, this is their prime. This is the era where perhaps in my carryover league, they will look better than they fared in Major League Baseball in the year-to-year -year league where they couldn't quite get over the playoff hump. But, boy, they're doing it this year. Solo shot Gary Carter and the Expos are shall we say, 21 outs away from clinching the top seed in the American League. Warren Cromartie, 59 is a K. Top of the third, hits Toby Hara. 
47, base hit. His name is the same, forwards and backwards. A palindrome. Thank you, Toby. Um, he will stay put at first, hoping for a Mike Hargrove walk. For 10, center X. Dawson's a one in center field. Makes the grab. Miguel Delaney. 37, sky's the center. And with two outs, it's Andre Thornton. 1-6, and that's a base hit because you had to hold on hard, Hara. Uh, and that hit the ball through the little hole there, and now you got runners on the corners with two outs, trying to tie this thing up or, or get a lead. And you got the 318 batter, Ron Hassey. 66, off the Sanderson card, double. 1-15, to two base hit, the Tribe tie things up at one. Second and third for Joe. Joe Charbonneau. Let's take a look at the newest kid in town, 1980. The Joe Charbonneau phenomenon. It's a shame. It only lasted a year. Uh, 23 homers, a 289 average. 1981 was very dismal, and that was it. Could open a beer bottle with his teeth. Not the only guy capable of that, I'm sure. The pitch to Joe Charbonneau. 2-6 is a bouncer to third. Wanda, one. Bottom of third, it's Brian Little. 6-11, left X. Delaney, a 2-E-10 in left field. Flies out. Doug Flynn, 59 second. And back up top to Tim, purple reigns. 55 is a walk. He's taken off. He's a triple-A steal. He got a plus-one arm catcher. He's in there on a 16. Yeah, that's what you can do with a triple-A against a bad throwing catcher. I've had him steal third base with one out a lot. I don't like to do it with two outs. And it's Stevie Ray Braun. 69, rolls a second. We go to the fourth. Rick Manning, 2-4. Second. Jowie the boo boo boo. Single one and nine lines out. And with two outs, it's Dwayne Kuiper. One three. Pops to third. Bomb of four. It's Dondre. Awesome. Six eleven. Bouncer to short. Jowie the boo 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 is a three twenty four and he kicks that one. Jowie. He's a double A stealer. He's going to take off and he's in there on a four. The flying expos. Now you got to deal with, let's take a look at some cards, folks. So we're showing you a playoff team. You got to see what they look like. Look at this. Al Oliver, he goes, I don't get it, a pirate, then a ranger. And then he goes to the Expos. All the guy does is hit. Wherever they ask him to hit. And they said, you know, Al, don't worry about outfield anymore. We'll just sit you there at first base. He was a 4E20 in the National League where they didn't have a designated hitter. And Expos could care less because Al Oliver hit 331 with 22 bombs. Led the league in hits as well. Incredible year for him. Runner at second. The pitch to Al Oliver. 1 8, right on cue. Base hit the left field. Dawson, a 17 runner against the plus three arm of Miguel Delaney. And he just strolls on home. It's 2 1 now. Runner at first for Larry Parrish. 54 lines the first. Gary Carter homered earlier. 37 to walk. Two on. One out. Warren Cromartie. 56 is a K. And with two outs. Ryan Little. 67 is a K. All right. It's just 2 1. A lot of smoke. But the Indians are right in this one. Trying to even this series up a game with uh, two games apiece. Top of the fifth. It's Toby Hera. 67 Ks. Hargrove, the human rain delay, 63, first X. Oliver again, a 4E20. And he makes the play. Look at that. On his fourness. See how see the Expos? I don't care about his bad defense. They like that bat. Miguel Delane, a 341 hitting, number three hitter. One four is a walk. Double A stealer. You know he's gonna take off against the kid, and he's in there. He challenged Gary Carter's strong arm. He's a double A stealer. And he survived this battle. And now you got a runner in scoring position. Two outs for the dangerous Andre Thornton in his 33 home runs. 1-4. Skies to center field. 2-1. Spose. Good baseball game between two pretty good teams. Let's pause a moment for station 
Identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. All right, bottom of the fifth. It's Doug Flynn. 57 is a K. Tim, Purple Reigns, 48. That's a strikeout. And with two outs, it's Stevie Ray Braun. He strikes out. Into the sixth we go. 2 1 affair. Ron Hassey. 34 pitcher. Charbonneau, 45, bounce the second. And with two outs, it's Rick Manning. 2-8, Browns the third. Scott Sanderson holding the uh, Indians at bay here. 2-1 lead, bottom of the sixth. It's Dondre Awesome. He has scored the lead run after reaching on an error and stealing a base last time up. 58, a bouncer to short. Shortstop, Kaczynski, a 3-24. And this time it's a base hit, so Dawson knows where to hit it. He reaches on a Dubzinski error. He reaches on a single. Do you steal with nobody out with a batting champion up? No, let's see what happens here. Let's develop this hitting a little bit. Al Oliver. 66 is a sky to right. Larry Parrish. 46, and that's a base hit off of Bly Levin to left field. Again, you got that plus three armadillo, eh? So Dawson will, will throw... I don't, it's a 1 to 20, so yeah, he's on at third. Runs in the corners. I got to bring it up for Gary Carter. 54, pops to first. And with two outs, big at bat here as the Expos have blown some opportunities in this one. Big opportunity to increase the lead. It'll be Warren Cromarty, named after the uh, Warren Cromarty Middle School on the back cover of the. Uh, Rush Signals LP, which doesn't even exist. There's no such thing. But a little, little known trivia there for you. I'm going to check that one out. Warren Cromarty, here we go. 410 up by 11, center X. Great center fielders in this game. Dawson's a one, as is Rick Manning, a 1 7 in center field. And that is in the glove. To the seventh we go, it's 2 1. Jowie the Boo Boo. 45, bounce the second. Dwayne Kuiper, he's not going to hit a homer out of that. 68, Kuiper caves. And with two outs, it's Toby Hara looking to get on for the third time. 47 is a base hit off of Scott Sanderson. And with two outs, it's Mike Hargrove, the human rain delay. Takes a practice swing. Takes a practice swing. Calls timeout. Takes a practice swing. Steps out of the box. Umpire looks at him. Takes a practice swing. Grabs his jump. Taps his helmet. We're still waiting, folks. For my car to get in the batter's box. Still waiting. There he is. He's in there now. Okay. So he's in there now with a runner at first and two outs. The pitch to Mike Hargrove. 2-7 is ball four. And oh my God, a 15-minute at-bat. Two on, two out. Sanderson now is on the hook for a loss if these guys were to score. Sanderson, if you reach base with a hit or walk, reaches a point of weakness. Miguel Delaney, a 341 batter here. This is a big moment for the Expos here. There's going to be a mound visit. They're thinking about this. You know, you got a 341 batter here in a one-run game. Followed by Andre Thornton and his 32 home runs. Delaney is better against righties. I think they're going to the pen here. They're going to the pen. They're going to move Delaney around, switch hitter. Let's take a look at the Delaney car. Miguel Delaney. 341. Where did this come from? Where did 341 come from? My goodness. He's got one other good year hitting like 290, I think. But that's about it for Miguel. But 1980 was very kind to him. First and second. Dave Hamilton comes into the game. He is a lefty who gets righties out. This is, that's what the situation calls for. Hamilton was an Oakland A in 79. Three and four were the 369 ERA. Probably faced just the one batter. As the Expos have... Two lefties and two righties. Uh, Hamilton against Miguel Delaney. And here is the pitch. 46, single 1 to 12. And he would miss it with a 16. Hamilton, nice break. 
Single one of 12 chance for Hamilton against a righty. That is a line out. And the Indians do not score. Stretch time. Here in Lake Champlain, we are enjoying, boy, this is a heck of a, this is beautiful rivers and mountains, the psychedelic rock sound of South Korea's Shin Yung Hung, 1958 to 74. Boy, this is just a beautiful collection of music here. Let's throw uh, this one down. This is really something special here. Yeah, I've been digging this record lately. My goodness. Talk about nuggets. South Korean nuggets right here. Beautiful rivers and mountains. Let's get back to the game. Bottom of the seventh inning. Bly Levin is not going anywhere. He will battle Brian Little. 38 bounces the first. Doug Flynn. One eight's a single. Tim Purple Reigns. 611. Left X. Delane. A 2E10. Good range. But that's a two base error. The way you play this out is that E7 makes a two base error and he's an E10. Worse than that. So it, you stay with the consistency there for the home team. It's 2E7. Second and third. One out. You got to bring the infield up now for Stevie Ray Braun. 210. Let's take a look at Stevie Ray Braun, a 196 hitter, batting second, folks, because he walked 15 times with 46 at bats and has a million walks on his card. Has like a 400 on base with a 196 batting average. Here, though, 210, he's swinging. Single one of 14, but he rolls a 20. Big break for the Indians. Big break for the Tribe. That is a line out. And runners stay at second and third with two outs for Dondre Awesome. 511 is a walk. Bases are loaded. You haven't broken Bly 11. He's a starter eight. And we have Mr. Oliver. Al Oliver. Bases loaded. Two outs is why you brought him to uh, the two. That's why you signed him anyway. The pitch to Al Oliver. 46 off Bly 11 is a base hit to left field. One run scores. Purple Reigns. This is a mismatch. Purple Reigns, 17 runner against the plus three arm of Miguel de Lene. And yeah, that is a two run single. That's a heartbreaking base hit. What are you going to do against these Expos? They can beat you so many different ways. It is now 4-1. to one. Bly Levin will continue. He breaks in the 8th to Larry Parrish. Who skies the center field. 4-1 now. Into the 8th we go. With a 3-run lead, Hassey will actually continue for a couple batters. He won't be hooked right away. It'll be Andre Thornton leading off. 47 is a walk. That was a mistake. Ron Hassey will swing away as Hamilton is worse against lefties. 68, though, is a sky to center field. And that's it for Hamilton. He goes two-thirds of an inning, gets a the walk, gets a couple outs, five outs to get. Do they go with Sosa here? I think they're going to do it. They're going to go right to their closer. Elias Sosa, 1979, eight and seven with a 195 ERA in 97 innings. Has not really been playing in this series because the game's been kind of one-sided. They're asking them to get a five-out save to clinch the number one seed in the American League, folks. Wow. Runner at first, it's Joe Charbonneau. Here's the pitch. 56 is short X. Your shortstop is Brian Little. They did not bring in a defensive substitution. Will that hurt these Expos? It's a ground ball C. Now you got a runner second with two outs for Rick Manning. And he grounds the first. Bottom of the eighth. Fly 11. He's going to go out throwing. Had a rocky kind of a game, but an error scores a run. Another error scores another run. He's continuing. Bottom of the eighth, Gary Carter, 67 to strike out. Warren Cromarty, 2-3, flies the right. And that Brian Little, 
On six is a base hit for Brian, and running for Brian Little, the new shortstop will be Mick Kelleher. He was a 3E23 shortstop. Doug Flynn, 1 8. Single dot dot, runners in the corners. And it's Purple Reigns, and that'll do it for Y11. Seven and two thirds. We're going to go to Rod Scurry out of the Cleveland Pen. See if they can get the final out here in the eighth inning to keep this thing reasonable. Tim Reigns versus Rod Scurry. Scurry was. 4-5 with a 174 ERA, 104 innings with the Pirates in 1982. Here's the pitch to Tim Raines. 38's ball four. The Expos draw a lot of walks, and today they have drawn one, two, three, just four to this point. And batting for Stevie Ray Braun will be the defensive replacement at first, Rich Murray. And just like that, they pull Rod Scurry because they just need to get another out. It'll be Jim Kern. Let's take a look at him. Jim Kern, the Cleveland closer, 13 and five, a buck 57 ERA, and 143 innings for the Rangers in '79. But the Indians have him here. One of the reasons why the Indians have been so good this year: when they get a lead, they've turned to Kern. However, here they just want to keep the series alive. They're going to turn to Kern. Bases loaded, two outs. Jim Kern. Now let's take a look at the Rich Murray card. The younger brother of Eddie E. Drink of E. Murray, Baltimore's first baseman. 1980 at 216 with four home runs, but he's advantageous against lefties. And he serves as a defensive replacement for Al Oliver. The pitch to Rich Murray. 2-6 is a K versus Reddy. And we go to the ninth. All the defense is in. It's a three-run lead. They're asking Elias Sosa to get three more outs to clinch the top seed in the American League. It'll be Jerry Dubzinski leading off in the ninth. One seven's a base hit. The Beast Stealer runs down to second base without a throw. So he's at second for Dwayne Kuyper. 47. 47 off Sosa. Triple, 118. That's a triple. This would have been scary if it was a two-run game. But it's four to two, and now the tie and run will come to the plate. And Toby Hara, you cannot break so so he's a relief three, but you could certainly put a nice scare into him. The pitch, to Toby Hara, sixty-seven is a K, one out. Now you got Hargrove. Two six is single dot dot, and the Indians have come back to pull within a run here in the ninth off the Expo closer. The tie run is at first with one out, and you got the 341 bat of Miguel Delaney. You saw his card earlier, folks. Here's the pitch to Delaney. 1 3 is a ground ball to first B. Now, interesting. You got the tie run at first as a double A stealer against Gary Carter with Andre Thornton at the plate. And the thing is, I don't like Thornton's chances of scoring the guy with a single because he's probably going to either homer, walk, or strike out. So I am, he walked 109 times. Let's take a look at Thornton. You see his card, he doesn't even have, well, two six is a single chance, but otherwise, you're just risking the game being over if Miguel Delaney gets caught stealing. So he'll stay at first. You get the plus here. If you're all plus, you can shoot it through the hole. The Expos are holding DLNA. They don't want the tie run just to run down to second base. So DLNA at first with two outs. And the pitch to Andre Thornton. 3-6 Andre Thornton right on cue. It is gone. A two-run over off the Expo. Closer in the ninth inning. Oh, boy, folks. The rally music immediately quiets down here as the Expos have blown this thing. It's 5-4 Indians. And Ron Hassey, 66, is a sky to center field. My goodness, and Jim Kern's out there to collect the victory. Now the Indians, do they have some defense to bring in? Oh, my goodness, what a turn here. An easy 4-1 lead in the ninth to clinch the top seed of the American League. Hey, the Milwaukee Brewers are watching this. They're thinking, hey, wait a minute. Indians win two straight. 
We pull a number on the Royals, then Harvey's Wallbangers, Cleveland Indians. I mean, the Milwaukee Brewers will be the top seed in the American League. Del Unser will come in defensively for the aforementioned Andre Thornton, who's having a heck of a series. 5 4 game. Jim Kern goes back out there for the ninth. It'll be Dawson, Oliver, Parrish, and Carter. Here we go. The pitch to Andre Dawson. 2-5 is double one to two. Base hit for the double A Steeler. And they still have Ron Hassey in there catching. Who has a plus one arm. And he's going to take off. This is going to be close. A 16. He's 17. Plus one 18. Minus two is a 16. He's barely in there, but he's safe at second base. You got the tie run at second for Al Oliver. 45 off of Kern is double one to two. Base hit and the game is tied. Boy, some bad closing here by Sosa and Kern. Two closers. The two of the top closers of 1979, I might want to add. Look at this again. Yeah, 195. Sosa with the Expos and 157. Kern with the Rangers. Joining, I guess, Rich Gossage and... I don't know who else would have been the best closure in 79. But it's a 5-5 tie. You cannot break Kern either. He's also a relief three. And it's Larry Parrish. 2-7. Let's take a look at Larry Parrish's card. Double. 1-2-11. Single the rest. That is a double. And the Expos are like, lose? Lose this game? We're not going to lose this game. We're just going to run the Indians out of town in the bottom of the ninth. Jim Kern. Blowing this thing. Single, single, double. You got second and third. Nobody out. You got to bring the infield up. In a 5-5 game, you do have a base open. But you're going to bring it up and face Gary Carter, who is homered today, walked, popped out, and struck out. The pitch to Gary Carter. 1-4. Fly ball to left B question mark. Guess who's out in left field, folks? If you guessed Miguel Delaney is plus three arm, you'd be correct. Al Oliver, a 12 runner. It's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 1, 2, 17. And he scores on the Expos win anyway. My goodness. Oh, my, folks. These Expos. What a wild finish here. 4 1, you know, sleeper. And then the Indians woke up in the ninth, but then their closer couldn't get anybody out in the bottom half of the inning. My goodness. So Jim Kern actually gets credited with a catch on the sack fly. So he did get two outs. And actually Sosa did get five outs for a win, but both pitched poorly. And the Expos have won this series three games to one. And yes, they have clinched the top seed in the American League. Oh my goodness, folks. Sosa gives up one, two, three, four hits, four runs and a K and a ninth, and collects a win. That'll hurt his year-to-date earned run average, I'm sure. Dave Hamilton got two outs sandwiched around a walk. Sanderson has to settle for a no decision. Shame. That's a shame. Did just give up five hits and a run. Five walks, three strikeouts. So Rod Scurry came on in the eighth. He didn't get anybody out, right? He faced um, Tim Raines. He walked him. And then they went to a new pitcher. And that was Kern. He struck that batter out. But he's up three hits and two runs in the ninth. Everything else was Bly 11. I got a no decision. Eight hits and four runs off Bly 11, but one, just one of those was earned. My goodness. Three walks, seven strikeouts. 1 0 9, 0 1 0 8, and a third. 6 11, 5 9. 6 4, 4 8, 4 8, 6 4. How about that, folks? The Expos. I mean, even if they were to lose that game, they pretty much, you know. They had the division wrapped up anyway, but I mean, still, just to clinch the top seed, it would have been pretty mathematically difficult for another team to clinch. 
And so it wasn't really a lot to play for these two teams. And, and yet both teams rallied against the opposing closer. Three games to one. The Expos are now an impressive 19 and 8. Wow. That's something special there. Indians are just 5 over 500. Expos are 19 and 8, hitting 294 with a 362 ERA. Sosa does have 8 saves and now a win. He could have had 9 saves. He's given up 5 runs in 13 innings, and you just saw 4 of them there. So beyond this failure, or if you want to call it that, he got a win. He'd only given up one run in 12 innings. Gary Carter, how about that? He's got 10 dingers. He's got 28 RBIs. Folks, I'm calling. I think he's your MVP. I mean, a catcher, you know, for the top seed in the American League with 10 homers and 28 RBI in 27 games. I mean, Al Oliver's got 41 hits and 112 at-bats. Somebody on the Expos has to be the MVP. I got to go Carter. Uh, let's see. Oliver's got 22 RBI and 6 homer. But he's not nearly the defensive whiz that Carter is. Not to mention that Carter slowed down a speedy Cleveland team that had Rick Manning, Toby Hara, and Miguel Delaney. And they were unable to take chances stealing bases there. Cleveland. Well, they're in the playoffs. They fell to 15-10. and 10. They're in 281 with a 497 ERA. Kern, that's his first loss. Two and one, six saves, seven runs in 14 innings. That's not very good. Not a lot of power on this team other than Andre Thornton. Six home runs, at least three of those in this series. 18 RBI. Not much beyond that, though, in this team. So this series is done. Three games to one, Expos. We could start penciling in some uh, roster spots here. There it is. That's a one. You can make that a one. And the Indians, uh, uh, that's a five. Yeah, one and five. That'll stay that way. Nobody can catch these Indians. The Orioles uh, fell to the Yankees hard there. So they're four over. And the if the Royals would have to sweep the Brewers three straight, to win the division and the Brewers would be knocked down by both being three over 500. So only one of these teams is going to the playoffs and looks overwhelmingly like it'll be the Brewers. Angels won the West and Oakland and Baltimore. Well, it looks like we're going to have to play a, a play-in game for the playoffs because every tiebreaker I've looked at with Oakland and Baltimore at four over 500 you know, winning percentage, strength of schedule, common opponent, head-to-head. -head. Every time I do a tiebreaker, everything kind of breaks and splits between them. I'll just play a game. I'll just have a play-in game. Matter of fact, what we're going to do is put it right here. Here's the end of the season here. Then there's a day off. Then the wild card game. Then a day off. Then, a, then the divisional series. So... No day off for Oakland and Baltimore. They'll do a play-in game to see who gets the number six seed. That'll be fun. So Oakland is 6A and Baltimore is 6B in that one. In the play-in game in the American League. But break up your Expos. They beat the Indians three games to one. They beat the Indians six out of seven times this year on a, on a good Cleveland team as well. Thanks for checking this out. And we'll see you next time.